What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV and the Premier League is back, people. and Welcome back to another episode of Premier League Predictions. We've got a full host of Premier League action coming up this weekend. And me, this is where me and my brother go head-to-head -head in predicting Premier League outcomes. The score is getting very close at the moment. 255 to Sim, 264 to myself. And uh, the way the scoring works, it's five points for a completely correct scoreline. One point for a correct result. Star man is three points for an assist five points for a goal and once you pick that man you cannot pick them again for the rest of the campaign and let's start off with a big one at the Etihad Manchester City against Liverpool I've gone for 3-2 to Man City Sim's gone for 4-2 to Man City so I'm guessing similar thinking just the goal mm. in it there yeah pretty much I think it's going to be an open game I think Liverpool are starting to play better than um, they have been for a lot of the season and results are starting to get better but their away form is still a lot to be desired obviously went to Bournemouth I know and lost 1-0 albeit they did miss a penalty um, during the game I think Man City at home at the Etihad um, are usually all uh, good for a victory and I do think Liverpool will kind of play into their hands a bit but I do see it being a very very open game albeit Haaland might be missing so how much that affects them uh, remains to be seen but I do see a lot of goals and I think Man City will come out on top it um, given the home advantage yeah, it's usually a really good game when these two face each other, no matter what form um, either side are in. And I'm expecting the same. I'm expecting a game full of goals. I do think Man City will get over the line with Liverpool's uh, really poor away form. But I do think Liverpool will turn up somewhat and, and score some goals. But I just think Man City will be a bit too strong at the Etihad here. So I've gone for 3-2. Sim's gone for 4-2. Let's move on to Arsenal against Leeds at the Emirates. Sim's gone for 3-1. I've gone for 2-1 to Arsenal. And um, I think Leeds have picked up a bit of late. And I think they will come and try and maybe frustrate Arsenal. But I do ultimately think Arsenal will get all three points and will be too strong. But I think it might be a bit closer than what people anticipate. Yeah, with Saliba missing, I do see Leeds maybe having a bit of joy in the counter-attack, but I just think Arsenal at home right now are just in period's form. Um, they, they they can't be stopped um, with, with the likes of Martelli and Saka and Odegaard linking up so well. Obviously, Jesus coming back into the side now, so I'm going to find it very difficult for Leeds to keep them out. Um, so that's why I'm going for 3-1, but I do see Leeds causing them a bit of trouble going the other way. Next up, Bournemouth against Fulham. I've gone for 1-1. One, one. Tim's gone for 1-0. Uh, what's what's your thinking behind this Yeah, I one? think Bournemouth at home have, have started to, to turn turn up a bit. They beat Liverpool um, in their last home game, 1-0. It was a very impressive um, a very impressive victory. And they're actually quite tough to play against at home. They're very compact and um, they, they can be hard to break down. And I think I can see them frustrating Fulham. And actually, um, they've got now, since January, when Traore and Utaro, they've got some decent players on the breakaway and they're starting to hurt the opposition a bit more um, and if they can keep things tight against a Fulham team who um, yes are playing are, are having a good season but I can see them getting a bit frustrated by this Bournemouth side and I've gone for a 1-0 win to Bournemouth Yeah I've gone for 1-1 I think that Bournemouth at home, I mean, they, they are, they've only lost one game in their last four home games against Man City, which was a 4-1 defeat. The others was 1-1 against Newcastle, 1-1 against Nottingham Forest and a 1-0 win against Liverpool. Fulham, on the other hand, they're actually having a bit of a tough time of it of late. I think they've lost three on the trot, albeit against um, good opposition, all three of those games. Um, but I can't really split these two sides. I think Bournemouth are going through a, um, a bit more of a positive momentum at the moment. But um, they are playing, get, coming up against a very good Fulham side. So I've gone for the split the spoils at 1-1 one, one in this game. Next up is Brighton against Brentford in a big, big battle. Um, well, some would say maybe even the battle for top four, battle for Europa League, uh, battle for Conference League. But it's definitely a battle up up in those in that sort of region. Uh, we've both gone for draws here. I've gone for 2-2. Two, two, Sim's gone for 1-1. One, one. And I think it's going to be a really good game of football, a real open game of football with quite a few goals. And I've gone for 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I think that um, Brighton and, and Brentford have two d very different approaches, but equally impressive and two very diff different tactical setups. And it's going to be interesting to see how they come up against each other. I do see them cancel each other out. I think Brighton will play their nice football, but they'll... Um, I think they'll struggle to really break down a very solid and organised Brentford, uh, Brentford side. And I think Brentford will have some chances from set pieces, but I do think they will be dominated by a good um, Brighton side. So that's why I've gone for a share of the spoils. 
Next up, Crystal Palace against Leicester. Roy Hodgson's Crystal Palace um, for one more time um, in his career. And I've gone for 1-0 to Crystal Palace. Sims go for 2-1 to Leicester. And we've gone for opposing scorelines here. Mm. What are you thinking? I think, I know it's Hodgson's first game. I, I know Leicester on a really, really bad form, albeit in their last game, they did get a credible 1-1 draw away at Brentford. Um, I think that Leicester do have some really good attacking um, talent in Madison. Um, uh, obviously, Barnes uh, is in good form. they got Dakar. Um, I think that Leicester actually in this game what I envisage is going to happen is that Palace are going to try and frustrate be compact organized like they were under Hodgson a few years ago but I actually think they're, they're going to get undone by a solid Leicester attacker who even against the better teams always um, threaten to score goals against you and I do see Palace obviously get, uh, do get, get a goal in Hodgson's first game but I actually see then coming unstuck in their first game maybe I see them getting the lead and actually getting like sitting back a bit too much and, and, and inviting Leicester on too much to them and Leicester um, willing getting to overcome them so I've gone for 2-1 to Leicester I actually think um, Roy Hodgson is going to do a bit of a job on Brendan this weekend I think even before Roy Hodgson came in Palace was still doing well at home you know they they weren't winning games but they weren't losing too many games at home that's for sure I think that's five uh, four draws in their last five home games or something like that and I think they will set up to frustrate Leicester I completely agree with that um, but I do think they have the uh, the firepower on the counter attack to hurt Leicester as well so I think both these teams have fairly good attacks but Leicester just not showing it at the moment they are just on disastrous form and I think I see it carry on here um, with a very resolute Leicester side under Roy Hodgson I think uh, at Selhurst Park so I've gone for 1-0 to Crystal Palace next up is Nottingham Forest against Wolverhampton uh, I've gone for 1-1 here Sim's gone for 1-0 to Nottingham Forest and Forest look they've been really good at home this season maybe have started a bit of late Wolves I mean you just never know which Wolves side are going to turn up to be honest um, but at home in front of the Forest fans, I've gone for a 1-1 draw and I think maybe Wolves will get a get a late equaliser or something like that. But I think it's not going to be the greatest game of football. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very tight game. I think Forest um, at home, even in their last game, they played Newcastle and were quite unlucky to end up in with uh, the defeat in that game with the last minute penalty. In the, they are they are haven't won in five, but the games that they um, haven't lost, 1-1 at home to Man City, 2-2 at home to Everton. So they are do seem to be hard to beat at home. And I think Wolves in this kind of game, I, I think I see their front line and they do struggle a lot of the times when they're given the initiative to really break teams down. And I think Forrest will give them the initiative. And I see that them frustrating um, Wolverhampton Wanderers. And I also see Forrest at home grabbing a moment of quality and just coming away with it. So I've gone for 1-0 to Forrest. Next up, Chelsea against Aston Villa at Stamford Bridge. <coughs> I've gone for 1-0 to Chelsea. Sim's gone for 2-1 to Chelsea. And why mm. have you gone for 2-1 to Chelsea? I think Chelsea are starting to turn it around a bit. I think that... Um they're starting to find their feet a bit under Graham Potter and the, and the performances are definitely improving, especially um, at home. They're starting to score goals. They did draw last time out at home to Everton 2-2, albeit they probably should have won that game. Obviously, they beat Dortmund 2-0 um, fairly recently in the Champions League. And I think a Villa side that's going to kind of allow... Chelsea to have the initiative they're going to allow them to have the ball they're going to try and hit them on the counter like Unai Emery does and I think that that Chelsea will fancy their chances of being able to break down this Villa side with the talent they have going forward and with the the couple of the fact they are starting to find their feet and even though Villa are on good form I think they're going to come unstuck against a, a Chelsea side which are a bit resurgent. Yeah, after that um, Villa loss against Arsenal, it does seem like they have somewhat turned a corner a little bit under Unai Emery with um, three wins and a draw in their last four games. Chelsea, on the other hand as well, seem to have turned a corner, a bit of a corner under Graham Potter, getting results really impressive in the Champions League. Um, yeah, they, they come unstuck at Goodison Park last time out, but apart from that, they are seem to be getting results up after that Tottenham game and I think um, it's going to stay the same here and I think it will be a very tight game with Villa limiting Chelsea a little bit to chances but I think they will find that goal and they'll be quite um, hard to beat down the other end so I've gone for 1-0 to Chelsea next up is West Ham against Southampton Sims gone for 3-1 to West Ham I've gone for 2-0 to West Ham 
And um, yeah, Southampton, they're just poor at the moment. I mean, they got a point against us, but that was more our, our doing than their doing, to be honest. And I think West Ham um, at home, they're pulling out some results at the moment. 4-0 against Nottingham Forest. And I expect them to go on and get another three points this weekend and, um, you know, pull themselves away a bit from that drop. Yeah, I think to be fair to Hampton, they are showing a bit of fight at the moment. They did battle for a point against us. They got a point away at Old Trafford, albeit they were playing against 10 men for a lot of the game and they beat Leicester. So um, they have only, they've all lost one of their last four. So they are showing a bit of fight and it's not to get points on the board. But I do think away at West Ham, I think in a way they'll play into West Ham's hands. And I think West Ham will be waiting for them. They're going to um, try and be a bit more on the front foot and attacking, but also make sure that they're not giving any um, giving the initiative to Southampton, and they'll, which I think Southampton are going to look for that initiative and I think that the physicality of West Ham will be too much for this young Southampton team and I think when West Ham need a result at home like this against a relegation um, battling team a lot of, more often than not they'll pull out pull out the bag and I think they know how to get results when they really need to um, this West Ham team especially at home so I think they will be that that will be the undoing for, for Southampton and a three points for West Ham. Mm. Next up is Newcastle against Manchester United. Tim's gone for 2-2. Two, two. I've gone for 1-1. One, one. And, um, you know, Man you got a lot of problems this weekend. Potentially Rashford out. Uh, he's a doubt. Casemiro's out suspended. Newcastle, um, you know, they, they seem to have turned it around a little bit as well. Isaac's really in form. But I can see the... Um, Newcastle setting up to for straight Man United and it only being a 1-1 uh, game. Yeah, I think um one sec. I think that um it's going to be quite an open game in this because they're both kind of in the top four battle at the moment. They're both in the race and um Newcastle's turned the corner a bit. So I think spirits will be a bit higher going into this game um, at St. James's Park. Obviously, they're going to want revenge for the Carabao Cup final. Um, but with the way United play, quite open. Um, United like to play, uh, obviously, expansive football. Newcastle are a bit different in that aspect. Um, they're, they're very well organised, hard to break down, but um, kind of don't... Have, they're four players at the moment. Isaac's really on good form, but I feel like they're four players at the moment. Um, Almiron kind of is, the goals are drying up for him a bit. So Maximam doesn't seem to be getting the goal contributions. So very line on, on on Isaac. So I think with the fact that Newcastle at home will mean they'll probably loosen the shackles a bit and go a bit more attacking. That would suit Man United to do like a bit of an open game. But um, I see got the goals being shared in this one two two. And moving on to the last game of the weekend, which is Everton against Tottenham Hotspur at Goodison Park. Sims gone for 1-0 to Everton. I've gone for 2-1 to Spurs. And my thinking behind Spurs winning, I mean, I was deliberating between 2-1 to Everton or 2-1 to Spurs uh, for quite a while. And I stuck with 2-1 to Spurs just because I feel like the shackles might be off a little bit with Conte gone. We heard a lot of discontent under Conte. None of the players really playing for him. And I feel like that, that could bring a bit of a good... Um, good atmosphere in the dressing room, or a better atmosphere in the dressing room, should I say? And I think Spurs might go on to nick this game two one. And you and I remember when um, when Jose was sacked and Mason came in, it kind of gave a similar effect, and we won the next game. So um, I'm going for it to happen again. I think that all might be true, but the one thing that has me um, thinking that Everton are going to win this game is I'm thinking who's going to want it more. Who's going to be up for the fight when it, when those big 50, 50 challenges come in and it's about who's more aggressive, who wants the ball more? Um, I just think Everton are going to win it all ends up and I, I think that they're going to be more aggressive than us. They're going to be trying to physically dominate us. They're going to give us possession and ask, and ask them to break them down and it's, about, it's going to be about who's going to be up for it, who's going to have those second balls under the lights on a Monday night. I think Edison, Everton at Goodison Park under Sean Dyche have been fairly good um, since he's taken over and I just think they're going to want it more. And I think this Tottenham team is going to buckle when, when the going gets tough. So I've gone for 1-0 Everton. All right. Interesting stuff. And the star men. Sim's gone for Kai Havertz. I've gone for Danny Ings at home to his old club in Southampton. So I said West Ham were going to win 2-0. And mm. I think Danny Ings will be central to that. 
Yeah, I was just thinking of a striker who's guaranteed to start. And I think Chelsea at home to Villa, I think Havertz will get the nod. He's in good goal scoring form. So I've gone for him in this one. Yeah, it's at this point of predict the Prem at this stage of the season, it's just about getting someone who plays. Exactly, <laughs> someone who's guaranteed to play because you need the points at the moment. Yeah, uh, so that is our predict the Prem for this week. Let me know your predictions in the comment section below. Let me know your star man in the comment section below. And let me know who you think is going to come out on top this week, me or Sim, in the comment section below. Thank you, everyone for joining us today like subscribe and comment and as always come